Okay, Yellow Army, hello and welcome to another interview here on official TUFC TV. Uh, today, I'm delighted to be joined by Talk United Assistant Manager, Aaron Downs. Aaron, great to see you. How's your summer going? Good, uh, busy, but uh, no, good to see you as well, Don. But uh, no, really busy. Like I say, it's uh, um, these first couple of weeks are really important, um, as we've known previously. Um, we've, we've been in it a while now, but they are really important. So um, I haven't gone away yet, just uh, getting a, a few things done before we can uh, before we can relax. Now, Aaron, obviously you've been in professional football now for looking on 20 years now. So, I mean, do you ever actually, when you're part of the management team of a professional football club, do you ever really get a proper break? Uh, when you're a player, you kind of, <clears throat> the the last sort of whistle goes of the season, you, you, you go and see a few people, say good day to mate, say goodbye. Um, and then you literally, you, your shoulders almost go like, right, I can breathe, relax. I've got six weeks, seven weeks or whatever. I've just got to tick over my body before we come back pre-season. And you, you, you can switch off uh, as a, as a um, assistant manager, as a coach. Um, there's a lot of things going through your head. Um, you've got to get a lot of things done early and then a lot of things done late. And then in between, you're trying to improve yourself uh, as a person um, and you're trying to improve yourself um, so then when you go back in to, with the players, you, you're rejuvenated, you've got fresh ideas, you, you're always trying to uh, um, sort of um, self-reflect and then um, improve. So you don't get that time to uh, switch off. Um, it's a different type of um, sort of role. You know, you go from coaching, preparing, planning for, for, uh, for games into now there's no football to be played and no coaching sessions to, to sort out. But it's about you know recruitment and then planning. A lot of planning for preseason, for um, the season ahead, um, and different sort of how, how it's going to plan out and, and whatnot. So there's a lot of work done um, at home, um, but there is a lot of work done. <laughs> it's sound, we've already spoken to some of the uh, the players that have signed up for next season. It's been great news so far, and it obviously sounds like you're sharing in that passion and excitement for next season already. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Um, it was, you know, disappointing how the uh, the season ended for, for us all. It was not something we envisaged happening. Um, but what it will do, hopefully, uh, will give us a springboard um, moving forward uh, this season. And we can um, get a couple of things right, which we have done um, a couple of things already got right. There's still a few more um, pieces to the jigsaw, shall we say, to, to be um, to be sorted. Um but we've got a really good start, really good basis um, and core group at the minute. Um, so that, that gives us a lot of optimism, a lot of excitement um, moving forward. We can reflect um, from the last time um, we got promoted out of the South and look at that as far as that positivity, that um, momentum it took from getting a promotion, took it into the next two seasons, which which culminated in a, a playoff one. Um, so we can use that sort of um, fuel, I suppose, to say if we get it right um, and we feel we're going to be successful this year, uh, then it can really be a springboard for, for future years. So um, planning for now is, is important, but also planning for um, longer term can also uh, come into that as well. Aaron, you've already touched upon it, and I, I think we have to look at this the, the recruitment obviously is vital at this time of year so you must be absolutely delighted you and the gaffer how well things have gone so far i mean i know that the yellow army are, are really pleased with the business that's been going so far and uh it does make a difference doesn't it where you've got those building blocks in place already from the previous season you're not starting afresh again yeah well the proof was in the pudding with the players that we've recruited so far at the, the last couple of months of the season uh, you know, we've we've retained um, a core group of the players that that went on and won um, so many games towards the back in the season and, and give us real hope. Uh, and then players bought into what we're trying to do, uh, bought into the club and really um, got good results at the level above. Uh, so it does give us uh, a lot of optimism. Um, the recruitment of uh, Bradley um, was also really uh, key and important. It's someone that we we have known about for a few years, but really tracked the last couple of months um, between Pete, the gaffer, and myself. Um, I'd gone and watched him play a couple of times, as, as as well as Pete and the gaffer had. So 
we we knew a lot about him, um, and that was a a, a good um, a good signing for us early in the window. Uh, so it gives us optimism. And then there's still a couple obviously key areas that that need to be sorted. But the group that have signed on were really quite um, comfortable to 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 stay because they knew it was obviously going to be um, real competitive next season. Uh, and that's important. That's important that you win in football matches. Um, that can that uh, enjoyment of winning football matches, it doesn't matter what level it's at. You know, if you feel you're going to be competitive and you're part of something, um, which I'm sure the Yellow Army will become, um, you know, 10, 15 games in when we uh, hopefully are right at the top end of the team, uh, the, the table and competing for a promotion spot, then it doesn't matter what level you're at, you enjoy football then. Uh, and that's sort of the, um, the task we've got, but also the, the vision we've got as well. Um, for next season is is going to be one of hopefully good football and enjoyment. One of the things that's very apparent about the players, not just the ones that are actually coming in from the club like like Brad Ash, but also the ones that are actually already in the building and decided to stay, is that they're also players that are very capable at playing in the National League, let alone the National League South. Is that something that's going through your mind when you're talking about the progression and the building blocks and the, the momentum that you mentioned before? Uh, is that something when you're, when you're recruiting, something, something in the back of your mind? Yeah, definitely. We, you always try, at, at our level, it's, um, it's difficult to recruit on four or five-year contracts. <laughs> um, it's, we don't have the luxury of doing that. Uh, you know, for instance, the club backed us really well on a few players um, last summer, which, you know, Jarvis um, turned out a great decision. We, we do look to um, recruit players that are the level above if we can. Uh, and obviously the, the signings we kept have proved themselves at the level above. Uh, and obviously Bradley as well. We, we, we know he's played that level um, and, you know, scoring 18 goals last year. And with all due respect to Weymouth in a team that was just stayed up, goes to show the 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 level of quality he has and the maturity he's now showing in his game, which we thought was always there and it's come to fruition this last season. And we feel we can hopefully move him to the next level um, as we can with a, a few other players. But you do look, to, you know, in an ideal world to play in long term, you still have to make sure you take care of that short term, um, which is really important and um, planning from week to week. But then also you can hopefully um, recruit sort of longer term-ish with a couple of players um, that can play next season and the season after, hopefully, at the, um, and be competitive at the level above. Um, hopefully, that's the the aim is to get that promotion and then um, be competitive next season at that level above. So that is the ultimate goal. Um, it doesn't always go the way you want, but um, nine times out of ten, well, we, we've proved previously that we can do that and hopefully we can do that again. One of the uh, key aspects to that strong end to the season was uh, the uh, improved defensive record. Apart from, obviously, the game against your old club, Chesterfield, which didn't quite go to plan. There was three clean sheets in those seven games. Only six goals conceded. And obviously, you must be very pleased for that. Obviously, it was uh, it was an area of the field that you played with much distinction during your time at playing. Yeah, the, the, there's a saying, goals win your games, clean sheets win your, win your leagues. Uh, and we are really big on that. We are really key. We, we didn't get enough clean sheets uh, early on in the season um, for numerous reasons, uh, you know, which uh, we're all um, part of. So it was a little bit of frustration early on, but, um, you know, a settled team does help that, which proved towards the end. Um, and, and players getting relationships um, and an understanding of, of, of each other and how people play. Um, can breed confidence, can breed good results. Uh, and that's something that we know, but it's something we're striving to do so we can hit the ground running come uh, pre-season and the start of the season. And we can have that uh, defensive solidity as well as the um, attacking prowess that we, we, we've we had previously. Um, we didn't have so much last season, but we, we hopefully can have um, for a longer period next season. Um, but still keeping a my, uh, an eye on the defensive solidity because, in general, the defensive um, record has been okay um, up until last season, really. But the back end showed that a continuity of, of personnel um, can can breed that confidence and that um, those types of performances that keep you clean sheets. So um, that hopefully can be key for us moving into next season. 
Now, what are the telling factors that uh, you've got a group of players that are really looking forward to the challenge ahead is that we've actually heard of more than one player that has been saying how excited they are to be getting back to pre-season. Now, that's not always said by professional footballers in, in, in pre-season. Um, how did you find pre-season as, as a player yourself? Uh, well, Dom, I'd like you to ask them players the same question a week in um, and see what their answer is. <laughs> uh, no, it's great. It's great that they're looking forward to it. It just goes to show the... the the positivity and the optimism that the players have. Um, and that's part and parcel of the reason that we, we worked hard to retain them. Uh, but uh, myself as a player, I, I, oddly and bizarrely, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I really love the, the, the fitness side of um, football and of life. You know, uh, you actively try and keep yourself fit. You don't get enough hours in the day, but I really enjoy, I really enjoyed it as a player. I really did because, uh, Throughout the season, generally, you're going from uh, playing, recover, uh, light training into playing. You know, so you're always in sort of a uh, recovery mode or or a build up to a game. So you never get the uh, um, the opportunity to really work on your gym work, your your um, your fitness levels, and you know, four or five weeks into pre season, generally is is one of the fittest you'll be. Um, and I really enjoyed that feeling. I really enjoyed that feeling of. Um, real strength and, and fitness and, um, you know, optimism that the season's going to bring. So I really enjoyed um, the fitness and it was a test of mentality, which um, really um, uh, I enjoy that aspect of the game and, and that aspect of life. So, you know, testing someone's uh, mindset um, as much as their, their, their body capabilities. Um, I find it really enjoyable now to stretch players and to test them and to see where they're at um, take them to their limit and then take them a little bit further and, and broaden their horizons and, and stretch their mind to make it um, robust because come uh, the, the heat of the battle uh, in a game, it, you're only relying on yourself then in, in your mindset to, to get through any barriers that stand in front of you. Um, and the stronger mentality players um, can, can push themselves on to get results or to see out a result or to get a draw or whatever, to, to nick something from a game. Um, that you probably might not be able to. So that mindset's really key, and, and that's where you can stretch them in pre-season. You've got the ability to do that without fear of um, fatiguing them for a, a match, an important match. So I do enjoy it. I enjoy it as a, uh, as a coach, but uh, I enjoy it as a player as well. Obviously, one of the uh, aspects of pre-season is that you'll have your your warm-up matches, your pre-season frame. We've already had a, a derby against Exeter City announced and there'll be more to follow, of course. But then you're looking at the heat of battle. You used the phrase battle just then and it is going to be a battle next season, isn't it? Because obviously, you know, the, the bookies will have Torquay up there as, as one of the favourites having won it the last time that we were at this level. But what do you remember about the, the National League South last time, Aaron? Because obviously you, you were part of that management team that won the title last time that we were down there. There's going to be some very good teams in there, nevertheless, isn't there? Some very good teams, um, some really competitive teams, and it's absolutely not going to be a walk in the park. Uh, confidently and rightly so, we we will be one of the, the favourites um, from our history, from our, our club size, uh, and from the personnel we've signed. Um, so rightly so, we'll be one of the, the, the favourites, um, and we embrace that. We're looking forward to having that that tag. Uh, but we're under no illusions of the, uh, the strength of the division. Uh, previously there were some really tough moments and everyone will look at it and say well we took over at 14th um, 14 points from the top and we end up finishing 12 points or 10 points clear uh, you know it must have been easy well it absolutely wasn't uh, you know we had a, some fantastic um, away games and some fantastic home games and, and results but in the depths of those there were some real 1-0 wins 2-1 wins uh, draws that we had to see out that were really tough um, amongst them was some standout, you know, seven twos and and whatnot. But there were still some really key moments and late goals that that Nicky wins, and and we're going to have to go through that again. Uh, so it's not going to be easy. And part of uh, my role would it, it'd be like um, a neglect if I didn't um, have an eye on the, the National League South and North previously. So I, I do understand the division really well. Um, We've, we've got Bradley Ash from there. So we do know the, the division quite well. Um, we've always got an eye on it, always looking at, at how teams are playing in that division. So we do know that there's there's a real mix. There's some teams that 
just for people to know, there's some teams like like Notts County's in there. They're going to play pass, really play out from the back and try and play through the thirds. Um, and there's some real direct teams. So there's a real blend um, in there. It's not just sort of one way. So um, if we can get um, to grips with that, with how we press and how we deal with directness and how we, uh, you know, um, press teams uh, and nick it off teams and transition on teams, then um, we'll stand a real good chance. But when the no illusions that um, there's some strong squads, some strong teams, some good clubs in that division, uh, but we relish the opportunity and relish the uh, the chance to uh, to be competitive in that league. And with a lot of uh, teams there relishing the opportunity to play the likes of Yeovil or like ourselves uh, and all that, it, it's going to be even more port- important to have the Yellow Army. They've got a big role to play next season, haven't they? A massive role. And you know, as, as frustrating as the end of the season was, we still got some great um, derbies. I mean, what a great, sort of pool of teams around us we've got you know we've got six or seven close local derbies so it gives us a west country obviously we'd rather have two other derbies in Exeter and Plymouth every week but um what we do find ourselves in is there's um some really good teams around us some close teams around us some great games and they will they will feel fantastic when they arrive on the day so at the thought of it now thinks oh we don't want to really be playing them but when we are playing them on the day it's going to be fantastic. There's going to be some great games. So the optimism um, and the positivity should really be there. Uh, and our supporters, as always, as they always have, are going to play a massive part, a key part um, in our success, um, in turning draws into wins, into turning losses into draws. They're going to be, or losses into wins. Um, they're going to be really key to drive us. And that is a big reason why we're able to retain the players that we have and to sign some of the players that we will sign is because we will have the support that we've got. Um, And we know that last time in the Conference South, um, when we were uh, going for the the last couple of games, gone for promotion, and when we had actually clinched promotion, we were getting five and 6,000 supporters um, in Playmore. And we haven't seen that until the Wrexham game, Um, partly down to COVID and and partly down to results or, or... um, for whatever reason, usually COVID. But um, so that positivity uh, um, and hopefully the, the results that we get and the, the position in the table um, will really give, whet the appetite, shall I say, of the supporters, um, especially the back end of the season. So, um, yeah, I'm personally really looking forward to it, really looking forward to it. Well, I think we all are. We don't want to wish the summer away too quickly, but I think most of us don't think that the 2023-24 uh, season can come around soon enough. I will ask you just one more question before we go. Yes. Uh, obviously, you're, you're a proud Aussie. Um, dare I ask you how you feel see the Ashes being played out this summer? Obviously, um, the two sides are the second and third in the ICC rankings at the moment. It could be a very interesting series. Are you confident? It's going to be a fantastic series. Uh, really looking forward to it. Uh, very confident, as every Aussie is, uh, with their cricket team, uh, especially at the moment because we've we've done all right recently. So uh, I think Joffrey Arsh is a key uh, miss for us. Uh, so uh, we're looking forward to it. It's never easy in England, but you can get a win in the first uh, the first test, and it sort of sets the tempo. So as always, that first test is really key. So looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. Fantastic. Well, thank you for joining us here today, Aaron. Really do appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you in pre-season. No, Jones. Cheers, Dom. Thank you. Keep up the work, mate. Doing great.